Hi guys, and welcome back to Tech Tutor Thursday, where each week I make a video covering a different tech topic. My name is Caitlin, and I am the Technology Tutor at the Carnegie Public Library, and today we are going to be learning about the very basics of using Ancestry in HeritageQuest. With your library card, you have free access to a number of different digital resources, including a number of genealogical resources. The library gives you access to resources such as Ancestry, Heritage Quest, Fold 3, and African American Heritage. But today, I am going to be diving into the basics of genealogical research and focusing on Ancestry and Heritage Quest. Typically, Ancestry can only be used within the library, and Heritage Quest requires a library card to log in. But right now, Ancestry has expanded access to be used from home, and Heritage Quest can be used without a library card. So, with your free time during the stay-at-home order and expanded access to these resources, it could be a perfect time to start working on your family tree. So, we are going to begin with Heritage Quest, and I am going to show you two ways that you can get there. Uh, we are already on the library's website under the Find Information link, so we are going to click on this top link here, which reads Online Research Resources. Now we are on the Ohio Web Library page, and if we scroll down a bit and select Genealogy, scroll down a bit more, we will find Heritage Quest. You could also opt to go straight to ohiowebliberary.org, um, as you can see here, to reach this page more quickly. So let's click on that, and we are in. Normally, this database does require you to enter your library card number, but right now the Ohio Web Library has expanded access um, to all Ohioans. So now we are on Heritage Quest website, and Heritage Quest includes census records from 1790 to 1940. They have books, serials, maps, and other records, and their database covers 60 countries dating back to the 1700s. So there is a lot of information on Heritage Quest. As you can see, we have a link in the top left-hand corner that reads Search. We have the Search button here on the main navigation bar as well. And if we scroll down uh, right here, we have another Search button uh, here. If we scroll down some more, we notice the different collections housed in this database, um, including U.S. Census records. We have Canada Census records. Um, we can search books, we can search Revolutionary War records, and then we can search U.S. obituaries. So depending on the information you are looking for, you could choose a collection to search within and click search now, but I'm going to scroll back up to the top and click begin searching. Now that we are on the search page, um, we can see even more collections to search within, including wills and probates, um, we have city directories, military records, immigration records, and there's even more if we scroll down to the bottom of the page. As an example search, I am going to go to search census right here, and then search now. So here we have the search form, and we have the ability to add first and middle names, last names, birthday, location of birth, death date, um, places lived, marriages, um, family members, all kinds of information we can enter here. Typically, the more you know, the better. So if you are looking for an ancestor, it is helpful to add as much as you know, including name, birth year, location lived, etc. But I do also think it can be helpful to start broad when you are first searching. Um, so you can browse through the results a bit and you don't miss anything. If your search is way too narrow from the onset and maybe a detail is incorrect, um, you may not find anything. If we scroll back up, we see on the right side of the page here, we have different search tips. Um, after you enter your details, you will just click search. Um, so my example search is going to be for my great, great grandpa. So I'm going to enter his name. And then I'm going to say that he lived in Ohio. And then I'm going to click search. Once you click search, um, this is what your results page will look like from here. Um, you can filter your results. Um, you can make, you can say that the name is either exact. So I know that his name was Clarence, so I'm going to make that exact. Um, I know that he lived in Ohio, but I don't know where. So I'm going to keep that broad and then I'm going to click update. You can also filter your results by location. So I could go through here and filter this to North America and then the U.S. and then Ohio. And then I could also say that I'm looking for records that are in the 1900s. 
On the results page, you can also hover over the link to view details without actually going to the page. You can go ahead and go straight to the image by clicking view image, or you can go ahead and click on the record to view it. So if this is the record I was looking for, I could come all the way down to the bottom and I could send the document to myself or I could view a printer friendly version. Or if this is not who I was looking for, I could come back up to the top, go back to all results, um, and then just keep browsing until I find what I need. So this is a pretty um, basic tutorial here. So I am going to go back to the home page. I'm going to point out one more thing. Um, I'm going to go to the main navigation bar and then I'm going to select this link. This is research aids. And then here um, we have a bunch of different tips and tricks and getting started guides provided by Heritage Quest um, to help you do your genealogical research. So now we are going to move on to Ancestry. I'm going to head back to the library's website. I'm going to go to the menu, find information, and then OWL online research resources. Like I pointed out earlier, you can also go straight to this website by going to ohiowebliberary.org. Now I'm going to scroll down to Genealogy, and then I'm going to click on the link for Ancestry Library Edition. Typically, Ancestry Library Edition can only be accessed within the library, um, but right now through May, you can access it from home since the library is closed. But you will still need to enter your library card number to get access. Um, I've already entered that in, so we are good to go, and I'm on the home page, um, and we're ready to begin. Side note, if you don't have a library card but would like to use Ancestry, go back to our website, go to the bottom, and click the link Apply for an e-card to get an e-resource card to use our digital resources while we are closed. So now we are on Ancestry Library Edition's homepage, which is very similar, if not the same, to Heritage Quest's. Um, some of the information included within Ancestry are U.S. Census records, there's birth, death, and marriage records, um, there's the Social Security Death Index, um, there's U.S. border crossing and transocean ship records, um, military collections including uh, prisoner of war records, World War I and II draft cards, casualty records, and records from the colonial era to the Vietnam era. So there is a lot here. On the home page, we have this search button up at the top, as well as this begin searching button here in the middle of the page. If we scroll down, we have click, quick links to different collections, including um, public member trees, birth, marriage, and death records, um, etc. We also have quick links to U.S. Census records, um, but I'm going to come back up to the top and click on begin searching, which brings us to the search page. Before I enter any search criteria, I'm going to point out the sidebar here on the right side of the page. Here we have more links to different collections, but we can also click on this link here, which reads Card Catalog. The Card Catalog is a pretty cool way to see just how vast the collections contained in Ancestry are, and it is a good way to browse information. At the top here, um, you can sort the collections by database title, date updated, date added, and record count. Um, if you look here, you can view the title of the record, the collection it belongs to, the number of records, and then any recent activity within that collection. On the left-hand side here, um, you can filter your results by collection, by location, um, by dates, and then even by language. Once you find a collection of interest, you can click on the title to search within that collection. I just find that interesting and it can be a good way to browse the information here, but I am going to go back to the search page and go to all categories. Um, so this is the basic search and I am going to click on show more options. Again, it is helpful to enter as much as you know um, without making it way too narrow. This page, I think, is the exact same as Heritage Quests, um, so I'm not going to spend too much time here explaining. I am just going to start entering my search criteria. So I am going to search for my great grandma this time, and I am going to enter her first and last name 
and location she lived, which is Fayette County, Ohio. And then I'm going to click search. Okay, so now we have the results page and my search retrieved 85,000 results. Um, so let's narrow it down using the filters on the left side of the page. At the top here, we can tell the search that we know things are exact or broad. So for example, I know that merit is exact, so I'm going to drag that over. Um, but I've seen her name spelled differently in these records, so I will make Medrith broad, and then I'm going to click update. That brings our results down to 55,000. Now I'm going to go down so that I can filter by category. So let's say I want to see her obituary. So I'm going to click on birth, marriage, and death. That brings it down to about 13,000. Um, I can then filter by location. So I'm going to do North America. Come back down, do USA. Then come back one more time and select Ohio. If we keep scrolling, we can also um, filter by date. As with Heritage Quest, we can use our mouse to hover over the link to view some details before clicking on it, like so. Um, we can also just click on this top result and view the full details. Um, if we really want to keep going down the genealogy research rabbit hole, I could click on these links for her father, her mother, her spouse, or I could go to the website where this information was retrieved from. Um, if I want to go all the way down, I can send this document to myself, or I can view a printer-friendly version. Again, as with Heritage Quest, we can come up to the top and then click on Learning Center. Um, and then here we can find more research aids, tips, and tricks to help with our genealogy research. Genealogy research can be a bit overwhelming, especially for beginners. Um, I encourage you to talk with relatives to see what they know about your ancestors. Um, don't give up too soon and be willing to spend some time getting used to these databases and the search process to find what you were looking for. It is very satisfying when you conduct a successful search and find exactly what you wanted. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and happy researching.